I'm joined by famous, nay infamous, spiritualist medium Stephen Wakeling, who uh, is based in Nottingham. Say hello, Steve. Hello, how are you? This is one of our, um, the latest in our, uh, what's turning into quite a long line of, of videos looking at, and podcasts as well, looking at lots of different stuff. And subject for this video is Mind Matters. And uh, Stephen, tell us about the mind. Well, without it, it's a faculty. Uh, I look at it as a faculty of the soul. And the mind is a great capacity. And without the mind, you know, pretty much we've got nothing. So the mind is flexible. And it's illumination of the mind that helps you to understand spiritual matters. And by doing that, it opens the corridor or the door into eternal knowledge. So we've got this idea of, of the soul. Is this a separate thing to the mind? Is it, is it part of the mind? You know, is, this, is, the, is the mind a physical thing, but the soul some spiritualist thing? How does it work? Well, the, well, the soul, if I explain it, that, you know, if we're talking about as three bodies, you have a physical body, which we have, with its imperfections and with age, as you can see with me. I know you look all right to me. I'm oh, getting past it now. <laughs> uh, but then also, it almost looks like a replica, it's not totally, uh, but it's a spiritual body, often referred to as the etheric body. Um, obviously, if people come back through mediumship uh, with a certain situation, uh, maybe an illness, an ailment, they will show that characteristic through to the medium for recognition. But within that, of all things, is the great light of everything, and I see that as a spark of divinity. However, you, how you see divinity is up to the individual's interpretation. But that spark is the soul, and within that, it has a sensory capacity, and that sensory capacity, as I see it, is the mind, and the mind is the key to all things. You've got a beautiful turn of phrase, and what I'm going to try and do is pick it apart so that a, a layman like me can kind of understand this really. So let's start with this idea of uh, psychic or medium. Give us a little bit, just give us a minute on, on that. Well, people have different views and different visions of what it may be, but there is a difference between a spiritual medium and a psychic. Each has their own part to play. Our work is not to give prophecy or, or, or to say, well, you're going to get married at the age of this age and you're going to have sex with married children, which is important because some people need that to, almost as a pointer, as a direction through life. It's always a tall, dark stranger, isn't it? Well, it tends to be, but at my age, it's usually a great old stranger. Uh, but what I, I find is it's very important to look at that. But a spiritual medium as an intellectual dialogue uh, with a life force that exists beyond the physical. And that information is then transferred. I used the, the, the point many years past to me is that uh, mediumship is a capacity to receive and disseminate information and transfer that information into sense and common sense and take away the nonsense. Sadly today there is a lot of nonsense spoken about something which is a natural process of communication between people who are in the world of light and people of us here in this world of earth. We've spoken before about this, this you know, the, the differences between psychic and medium really haven't we? So let, let's try and work in then, you know, how would you describe the mind then? Well, well, the mind, mind is, is part of the soul, uh, and the mind is hard to explain. But uh, one of the easiest ways I would say that if you actually looked at a television set, and particularly in the olden days when there used to be all the valves and tubes and everything associated with it, if you was to take off the back, you see the workings. And the workings really are, are, are the brain. Uh, but the mind is perhaps a screen on the front, and it's not just seen. Uh, visually, but also the mind has the capacity to have all the senses, taste, smell, touch, feel, all of those, and, and to be able to express itself within it. So it's, it's, a, it's a component part of the soul. It's a living there's, thing. There's a, there's a lot of kind of non-believers or scientists who, who, who say that, you know, the, the mind is the, the last great unknown, isn't it? You can't explain what the brain is capable of doing just from physically looking at this, uh, you know, this, this mush, this entity that sits in our heads. There's, even those guys say there's something else to understand, isn't there? Yeah, indeed there is. I, I, I've got two terminologies. One of my spiritual teachers, Jack Corbett, uh, said that uh, uh, the soul, for example, is spiritual energy that manifests itself through the physical body. Uh, but I see it in, in a different way as well, it take, embracing that thought, but also see it as a, a crystalline vessel of which the rainbow of divinity shines through. Again, another beautiful phrase. Well, again, let's try and understand that then. Um, in layman's terms, what do you believe the mind is doing within mediumship? What, what is that word? Well, usually nowadays they, they use the term uh, mental mediumship. 
I always get a bit confused with the mediums are mental, I don't know, but uh, mental mediumship. Uh, it's just a terminology because mediumship, as it's being used, or, or, or uh, the spirit would use that, and particularly the gifts, because ultimately, to be a medium, you have to have that gift. And this is where the problem comes with people who want it. You know, you know I've, I've said that many of our videos, I really don't want to come back with it again, but we have it. And, and that process is to, is to use the gift of mediumship uh, which is just the bridge between the two worlds to pass information between loved ones here in Earth and those who have entered beyond the great golden dawn. So, uh, asking you the question again, what, what do you think is, is physically at work? And that's, that's perhaps a kind of philosophical look at it. What, what do you think is physically at work then? Well, physically, from a physical sense, the, the spirit world are able to interact with us as physical bodies and pass that information. So through the various sensory capacities, which are obviously uh, enlightened through the mind, uh, we're able to pick up information and transfer that information to somebody else. So there's, there's, there's nothing necessarily, I don't know what the phrase I'd use, supernatural at work. It's, it's you have an acuity, you have a sensitivity that, that conventionally most other people don't have or through time we've lost. Well, I believe we. Is, is that yeah. how you would put it? Yeah, yeah, to a degree, but I, I think we've lost it to some degree because we've become so material. And I do believe that people in, in distant parts of the world, perhaps in the middle of Australia or in the wilds of, of, of some distant countries, are most likely in touch more with nature and the interaction of the spirit world than we are because we're heavily involved with the, uh, the process of matter. Because matter is important because we live here and reside here only for a short while. But uh, I think it's important to look at that, but I think it sometimes is mixed up and it's confused. But mainly uh, what we look at is the fact that we need to train ourselves, our spiritual capacity. And if our, through our spiritual capacity we, we get a closeness with the spirit world, so we become the bridge. But also to take away those, the silliness I get about dark and fear and, and all that. When I see people from the spirit world, and I had a young man came through to speak to me a few weeks ago when I was in that great uh, town of... Uh, of uh, uh, of Barnsley in South Yorkshire, uh, was a man who'd lost his physical life in Afghanistan, but was able to come back and give wonderful proof. Now, when I saw him, he was clearer and brighter than you are here, Johnny. Uh, so I only see people in brightness and light. I don't see shadows and darkness. Uh, that doesn't worry me at all. And recently, how uh, the spirit world interacted with my mind was when very nearly my uh, my daughter-in-law nearly left this life, well, just after having uh, my granddaughter, Isla, uh, so the tragedy and trauma she went through, she was closer to the next world than she was to this world. But the spirit world were around me and gave me great comfort through that. That is by using the gift of mediumship, which is a natural process and which can be developed and opened and unfolded like a flower. Interesting. We're running out of time. Man. Close us with, with this idea. What, what sort of types of mediumship are there? Well, there's different types of mediumship, but of course, all we use and the how mind. How are they using their mind differently? Well, I don't know how they use their mind, but I was trained to, to use my mind. Imagination is the first faculty. We need to imagine things. If not, we'd be standing up somebody imagine this chair at one time a day. So imagination, the capacity to analyse information as it comes through to us. Uh, we have values. We have the depth of our own mind, so we need time to be still to be allowed the spirit world to draw to us, but above all, uh, to be in mediumship, uh, the medium has to have feelings, and feelings are the electricity that makes the mind work, and we work within feelings, and those feelings should be one of joy, happiness and light, not of sadness, darkness or sorrow. Fantastic, we're going to have to leave it there. Um, closing comment you would make then about the, this, this, this video which has been about uh, the mind and, and the mind sort of contacts within mediumship. Well, the, the mind will see the glory of the greater day. All things work and interact through the mind, and our minds are interlinked between those in this world, those in the next world. We've all got the capacity for clairvoyance, which is purely to see, but ultimately it links with the great divine light, and it's open to your interpretation what that divine light is. It always feels like 10 minutes is never enough to do any subject, really, <laughs> is it? I suspect that this might, might go on from here. Um, Stephen, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr Green.